In the movie Braveheart, William Wallace famously says, every man dies, not every man really lives. Since I love to challenge everything, this raises an interesting question of whether everyone really dies, or at least whether they need to. It also has everything to do with an earlier episode where I discussed the topic of when are you? Today, we'll talk about the easiest and by far most successful form of a life extension as well as the immortality of legacy as we dive into just how much we're living and whether we ever need to die. This is the Heart Body Business Podcast. Inspiration, tips, and tools for entrepreneurs seeking a more fulfilling type of success. One that stems from exploring and expressing their true passion and purpose and finding healthy ways to do so, all coupled with insights and action items to get a business moving in the right direction. I'm Steve, your host, and I invite you to learn more at heartbodybusiness.com. In the Christian tradition, of course, Jesus is said to have resurrected, overcoming death. This is similar to countless myths that came before him, Perhaps suggesting this process was not unique, perhaps just foreshadowing his life, or perhaps symbolizing deeper truths for us to discover. In any case, this idea of overcoming death seems to be etched on many of our minds and hearts as humans. And while this may just come from an intuitive knowing of an afterlife, it certainly manifests in our spending countless billions on health and medicine. Of course, I separate those two concepts with health spending meant to move us forward in our health and medical spending usually meant to keep us from feeling ill health. Whichever we invest in, we spend in hopes of feeling better. We spend in hopes of adding years. Yet far too few are doing the one thing that's free to extend their lives and the quality of their lives, not by fractions, but by multiples. Not a 2% life extension, but 200% or more. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but I absolutely believe it to be true, and perhaps it can set the stage for immortality. I said it's free, so you know it's not a pill or supplement or technology. Instead, it has to do with the theme of heart-body business, and actually my new book, Who Moved My Chi, available on Amazon. I speak often of how we have three consciousness centers in the body, and only one of these is associated with the present moment, that is, the consciousness center of the heart. The present moment is the only one we're alive in and where we have power to build our dreams. Most of us are only perhaps 10% in the present moment. The rest of our energy clings to past events or desires for the future. So in my opinion, most of us are perhaps only 10% living. You can do a thing and barely experience it because you are hardly there to. You're not present with the experience, not breathing it in, not appreciating it. This is what Oscar Wilde meant when he said, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, that is all. I've said it before that Just existing might be the most frightening thing because it's possible we invested a lot in getting to play on this planet Earth and did so with specific goals in mind, what we might call life purpose. And imagine waking up from the game after investing so much in it and realizing you didn't get most of those goals done. So yes, not to ignore all the things we should do to make ourselves healthier and happier and more pain-free 
in the years we have, perhaps even to extend our lives a bit. Good lifestyle habits like sleeping well, exercising and moving, grounding, eating the right foods, avoiding toxins, even using technologies like Skinar and microcurrent devices, red light therapy, infrared saunas, all of these can enhance our quality of life. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to lose out on the thrill of the successes I have in life, family, friends, business, because I'm too unhealthy to enjoy them. So all of those things are important. But if I want to extend my life dramatically and for free, the answer is simple. Actually, live your life rather than just existing. Actually, bring more of yourself into the present moment so you experience the things you're going through rather than just passing time. If you brought yourself from 10% in the present moment to 20% in the present moment, you have just doubled your experience of life. In my opinion, this is the same as doubling your lifespan. And since I believe most people are 10% or less in the present moment, complete life mastery would mean extending their lives by 10 times. That's getting biblical. Someone living to 100 physically could, practically speaking, experience a thousand years worth of life compared to someone living just 10% in the present moment. And that would break Methuselah's record for longevity. Call it a cheat if you want. Say that this isn't really longevity. But is the goal of longevity to live as long as possible or to get more out of life, to experience more and accomplish more? I don't think anyone who's just passing the time wants to actually extend that time. The people I know who are really trying to extend their lives, and I've met many through a private longevity group, they're the people trying to suck the marrow from life, to get everything they can out of it. To really understand how it all fits together, I encourage you to check out my book, Who Moved My Chi, which you can find on Amazon. It's a quick read and explains how our different consciousness centers work together, how they tie us to other people, how we leak energy into the past and future, and how we can gather it into the present. This is the key to having the power to create what you want in life. Now, to give you value right here in the podcast, I can give you some keywords. Forgiveness patience, and gratitude. You can also learn about these by listening to other episodes of this podcast, as I often speak to these topics. The book just gives you a concise way to understand it all. Now, I'm going to get a little crazy here, but that's my nature. I love to question things, and I love to get esoteric. So bear with me as we enter a thought experiment where we consider... Do we ever need to die? Is it possible we can overcome death itself? There are researchers who are working on how to download consciousness into machines to extend life indefinitely. I'm not talking about a technology approach like that, as I'd rather die than end up in someone's controlled digital environment which, interestingly enough, might be the environment we live in now, based on the idea that we're living in a virtual reality. But in any case, I'm not knowingly going into yet another level of the virtual, especially because we know the people who would be running those worlds. No thank you. But is it possible to naturally overcome death? I can't speak on religious traditions I have no background in, but according to Christians, Jesus already did it. And while it might seem sacrilege to some Christians to suggest that others could do the same, I put out this challenge. 
What did Jesus mean when he said to his disciples that they would do the works he was doing and even greater things? He didn't define this, which leaves the door open to any possibility. And given that he overcame death and told his disciples that they would do even greater things than he was doing, why can't overcoming physical death be possible, at least in the Christian tradition? In a broader spiritual perspective, many people speak of developing a more refined body, what some would call a light body, as a result of increasing the vibrations of the physical body. And from a physics perspective, we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just takes different forms. Now, this sounds very new agey, but when you do the work of prayer or meditation, or as I would put it, bringing yourself into the heart center and the present moment, you can literally and without question feel your body humming or vibrating in a different way. It's an ecstatic sort of feeling. To me, if it's possible to create some sort of light body, or maybe better described as a love body, It is through the work of expressing more and more perfectly through the heart, in our personal lives, in our business lives, in everything we do. And therefore, if physical immortality is possible, I'm convinced this is the only way one could achieve it. Okay, now we've spoken of physical immortality, and thanks for taking that thought experiment journey with me. But let's conclude on something I'm sure we can all agree on, and which is important for everyone, but will definitely resonate with my fellow entrepreneurs. And that is the idea that we can all become immortal, or at least live well beyond our lives on earth, through our legacy, through what we leave to others. I was speaking with someone recently who felt she had no need to leave a legacy, and it made me reflect that maybe we misunderstand it. There is one sense of legacy where you hope to have your name live on, but there is a higher form of legacy, one whose only care is whether lives are touched, whether lives are made better by what we've done. Our vibrations right now can and do extend long into the future. And the question is, what vibration we want that to be? Have we built a bridge that will safely shorten people's journeys for years to come? Influenced their ideas with a book we've written? Employed them with a business we've built? Enhanced their lives with a new invention? It can be more subtle than this as well. Have we touched lives through simple interaction in a way that makes them better people, causing a butterfly effect of people made better and making others better? Have we healed someone through the healing arts or simply our kindness and allowed them to make their own mark on the world, a mark that might have otherwise been lost to illness or death? Every moment of every day, we're touching lives in subtle ways. We're always forming our legacy. It doesn't matter if our name will be remembered. The part of us that might care right now about our name won't care when we're gone. But beyond the subtle marks we make every day, what are our big projects? Do you have a list of things you've accomplished so far that you feel represent your purpose for being here? Do you have another list of the things you're still planning to do? What's on that list and are you working on it? Or if you don't have that list yet, when will you set your inner genius to the task, revealing your next project so you can commit to expressing it in your life? There is some value to the legacy of a name. If I discover and love a piece written by Mozart or a story written by Poe, I can look for more of their work by name, and perhaps my life is further touched. But beyond this, the legacy of name doesn't matter. And honestly, 
how many lives you touch doesn't matter. Your job is to provide the universe with your work so it can connect your work to those who need it. Express your love, your purpose, and let the universe handle the outcome. The truth is, you are already touching the lives of people living 200 years from now just by the things you think, say, and do. Because those vibrations are reverberating already and will carry to their moment in time. Your every expression is important. This makes every one of us important, and it makes us powerful if we wish to be. And knowing you are already of great value, what more are you here for? What is your next step to make the most of your time here? One way or another, how will you extend your life for your own experience on earth? And most importantly, from the perspective of love, how will you extend your life to the experiences of others? How will you make a difference and never die? Till next time, thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe. You can also join our mailing list to get alerts on our latest episodes and other tips, tools, and news. Learn more and sign up at heartbodybusiness.com.